This year is about restoring the balance. Trap Tendo. What is going on guys, DJ Av here, and today we're gonna talk about the best and the worst BST plugins and music software of 2020. So I think this will be a breath of fresh air because everybody talks about the best plugins and then they talk about their top five or the must haves and all this gassing. Let's be honest because not everything is fire or sometimes the top five is, let, ah, let's not do that. So what I'm gonna do is play a game with you guys. I'm gonna say, is it the best VST plugin of 2020 or is it the worst? In that manner, leave a space there so you can guess and then I'm gonna immediately weigh in with my hot takes and boy, will it be spicy. So with that being said, let's begin. Before we get started, here is the playlist of all of my reviews. I have over 234 reviews for VST plugins and software alone. That doesn't count here and all this other stuff that I talk about on this channel, but it will be in the description box for those who are interested in hearing demos and seeing it in action, just in case you need a little bit more information. So the first plugin we're gonna talk about is Hermes Synth by Busy Work V. Is it the best plugin of 2020 or is it the worst plugin of 2020? I'm gonna say it's a little above average. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it shocked me too. The main thing I like about Hermes Synth is it delivers on sounds. This is a Rompler Synth uh, made by a user producer that uses a lot of Rompler Synths and wanted to cash in on his own product, which I don't fault him for at all. And this market is wide open for music producers that know what they like in a VST plugin. And that is the biggest thing with Romplers is having great sounds that people would use. The people that created the sounds are above average sound designers. So with that being said, you still should have hollered at me. But other than that though, it cashes in on the right things. Price point, $50 for Hermes Synth, and then you spend $100 to get more sounds. And once you get more sounds, that means that you get to make beats. And to my surprise, the first beat I attempted using Hermes Synth came out very well. Like, I have a song to it now. Not playing it yet, that's how big of a song it is. Here's another plugin that I want to talk about, and it is by Beats by the Pound slash Studio Link. Is it the best plugin or is it the worst plugin of 2020? I say this is above average. Yeah, I know there's a theme here and I don't go crazy for Rompler Sense, but this one in particular is made by some guys that I grew up listening to their production and enjoy their music. Of course, Beast by the Pound has made beats for Master P and the whole No Limit at one time and many other people from 3-6 Mafia, the UGK. Yeah, there's a lot of history behind it and the sounds are there and that's what I really like about this. Now the caveat to this and what makes me just say, eh, just a little above average is the layout of certain key groups. Like they're not mapped to C properly and, and some of the sounds don't really translate when you use pad based MIDI controllers. This one came out a little after 2019, late 2019, and I haven't had it on the list yet. But hey, here's a perfect time to talk about it now. Nexus 3. Is it the best plugin of 2020 or is it the worst plugin of 2020? VFX, that's your time. One of the worst. And I know a lot of people are gonna be upset about that. I had Nexus 2 and when Nexus 2 came out, it was considered one of the best plugins, the must have plugins for hip hop producers because there weren't a lot of plugins that are romplers that had great sounds or a large library. That has changed. And then what really made me mad about this plugin is its lack of options. Like you can't make a sound from scratch all the way and pick out any of the PCMs and stuff like that, and that made me very upset. Borg Triton DST Edition. Is it one of the best plugins of 2020, or is it one of the worst? Quite obvious, it's one of the best. 
And here's why. The whole notion of Nexus altogether by ReFX actually comes from the Core Triton workstation itself. Now the Core Triton workstation has been used in many hits and that was one of my bigger videos when I talked about the Neptunes and many other producers that are out here that have done music production using the Core Triton. It's definitely like the Core Triton in itself as the Core Triton is digital and they just brought it into VST format. I would nudge points off just because there is not an iOS version and no, I don't want to use port module just for the Triton sound if it don't have it all. Why is it better? I've already talked about why it's better than Nexus. The main reason why is you can make your own sounds uh, with no restriction. Next on the list, let's talk about the Acheria D Collection series, which they just recently updated to eight. Is it one of the best? Or is it one of the worst VST plugins of 2020? Definitely one of the best. For the price point, yeah, I would argue that it's not a great price point for not everybody. Or you can get any of the plugins from the Aturia collection individually. If you like presets, definitely get the Aturia Analog Lab V or any of the ones individually. Now it's time for something very obscure. We have the Reason Rack plugin. Is it one of the best VST or one of the worst VST plugins of 2020? I would say it is super underrated and you guys were tripping if you didn't download the light version of it. When it comes down to Reason being mentioned in terms of DAWs, it's definitely not as popular as it was when it was just it in Cubase and FL Studio and has been overlooked by a lot of people. But when it comes down to the VST plugin, uh, you'll see what Reason does very well. And if you're into sound design or just layering sounds or having your best pick at some very good effects, yeah, I highly recommend it. What you're looking at is Friction, which I did a review on, and you can tell by that review that I really like it. Yeah, it's really good. And I do use it still. But let's talk about one of the most controversial things on my channel, and that is the music theory plugins. So these plugins help you cheat music theory, and Scalar 2 is one of the ones that a lot of people know about. Is Scalar 2 one of the best VST plugins of 2020, or one of the worst? You watch my channel, you already know how I feel about Scalar 2. It's one of the best if not the best. Scalar 2, I don't have much to say about it that I haven't said already. I have tons of videos on my channel about Scalar 2. I highly recommend checking out any of the old reviews, the new reviews, whatever. This is just phenomenal. Uh, I feel like a lot of people are overlooking Scalar 2 because of the cheap price point at 50 bucks, which makes it accessible. But at the same time, this thing is a beast at teaching you music theory as well. But when we step out of that, we have the Hexacore Orb Producer Suite, and I have Orb Chorus open right now. Is it one of the best VST plugins of 2020 or one of the worst? Yeah, I would say it's one of the best. Now, I talked about Scalar already, and so what does Hexacore Orb offer better than Scalar? Well, it basically does your melodies for you. Uh, right now, I have to update it, but I've already done a video on it. I've done two videos on it, and you can see for yourself of how easy it is to come up with melody. So we're coming into a, a very obscure category of VST plugins, and that is the drum percussion category. And this is Playbeat. So is it one of the best VST plugins of 2020, or is it one of the worst plugins of 2020? Definitely up there as one of the best. Now, again, I've done a whole video on this, but what makes this really good is this randomization features. You get the layer up to different 40 for one shots. Highly recommend using percussive one shots and you can throw it in. You can do different steps and pitches and volume, shuffle, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can kind of change up the flow of your music. If you are a loop based producer of some type or a loop based sound designer, and you do a lot of percussive stuff, I highly recommend getting in it for that. 
Here's Drum Computer. Is it one of the best VST plugins of 2020 or one of the worst? Definitely one of the best. What makes Drum Computer really good is you can create drums from scratch in seconds. And I actually themed my, one of my videos for it, though the beat that I made was pretty trash. But other than that, yeah, very good, strong tool. Sugar Bytes always on their P's and Q's and even delivered on a promise to have an iOS app. Very good for percussive loops and creating loop packs and stuff like that if you do percussive loop packs. Yeah, <laughs> something that I'd rather not talk about, but yeah, let's be uncrabby in 2021. Here's another obscure one. This is by Steinberg and it's called Backbone. Is it? one of the best VST plugins of 2020, or is it one of the worst? Definitely highly underrated. And when I say underrated, I mean that it's very good. So it's obviously one of the best. This is a one shot percussive plugin. So you can recreate snares from scratch and you can drag and drop your favorite drums already and mangle them even more. Uh, the review will do it more justice though than me talking about it because Backbone is very strong in that. So here is a, another 808 VST plugin that came out exclusively in 2020 and it's called 808 Studio 2 by Initial Audio. Is it one of the best or is it one of the worst VST plugins of 2020? I definitely think this is well above average, that's for sure. In my review, I was very shocked and kind of not shocked because 808 Studio was very good. Uh, Initial Audio did that and they was the first people to get into that realm of 808 plugins where you can create stuff from scratch using synthesis. Fast forward years down the line, of course, my favorite, which is Sublab came in with a dominant force. But then they came out with Studio 2. And yeah, definitely check out those videos. I have a comparison video of Sublab and 808 Studio. Let me know how you feel about that. Leave a comment below. Here's a plugin that caught a lot of hype on my channel from a whole bunch of viewers. And this is vital. Is it one of the best or one of the worst VST plugins of 2020? Well, it's kind of complicated. Now, I did a free download Friday for this because you can get the, a fully functional version of Vital and be able to use most of its features for free. And that is a really good upside to it. However, I thought to myself in my review, though I haven't released, I've made the video for the review, but I haven't released it yet, that it's too much like serum and it's a wavetable synthesizer that brings a lot to the table but again it's either this or serum now the biggest thing that i that vital has over serum is the price point and that's one thing i will say is the strong suit of vital like the price point and what it offers but uniqueness it doesn't offer much in that category so let's talk about effect plugins so we have the sauce by DJ Swivel Swivel Swivel. Is it one of the best or worst VST plugins of 2020? Ah, uh, DJ Swivel, I hate to do it, but I gotta be honest, it's one of the worst. It's not necessarily awful, but there are things like the price point being $100. I would argue that this is more or less a $50 plugin, or there are plugins that you can get for free that offer multi-band pitch shifting and so forth and at a level to which you can do pitch correction we're gonna get to it guys we're gonna get to it and that's the thing that i want dj swivel to understand and then this is one of his first vst plugins too as well so there is a hopeful future for him and he is pursuing it and i want to be one of the openly honest people when i say that it is very cpu expensive it's probably one of the most expensive CPU usages that I've experienced on an effect. Now, with that being said, let's move forward. Let's talk about Drip. Is it one of the best VST plugins of 2020 or is it one of the worst? 
I think you know the answer, guys. And with that being said, I am very proud of both DJ Swivel and any producer that ventures all outside of making beats and so forth or engineering uh, when it comes down to developing software and stuff like that. However, Drip catches massive amounts of hype from the ridiculous commercials. It's perfect. And yeah, it's just a normal plugin. Like everything about this plugin and I will do a full review on it. This is one that I haven't done a review on. Like there's free plugins that are better than this and this costs $47. So the novelty of this plugin is basically Kyle Beats and this animation. Speaking of great presentation, this one won an award with me as far as best UI of 2020. <laughs> is it the best or one of the worst VST plugins of 2020? is definitely below average. But one thing I will say in the defense of this company is it's not below average for what it does. It says the Drake underwater effect and it does that particular effect. However, it is nothing but a filter and a bit reducer and it's being sold above $40. I think normally this thing needs to be at least 20 or $15. Novelty plugins are really cool but at the same time, you know, like, dude, you can't really expect people to pay anything more than that. Definitely one of my lowest rating reviews, but at the same time, not that bad for use. A lot of people are fans of this, and that's cool. Yeah, here we are, another overhyped plugin, but let's decide right now, is it one of the best VST plugins of 2020 or one of the worst? I definitely believe that Ovox is one of the best ones. Now Waves has been pissing me off for quite a while with a lot of their other plugins that they have dropped. You already know, Epic. Their commercials have just taken over YouTube and that's fine, but this plugin actually delivers on a lot of things that when I was talking about the sauce earlier, it, it didn't do, but this does very well. Now we're talking about Waves again, the old spice of VSD plugin companies. <laughs> and when I say that, it's because they're a company that's been around for quite a while. Old spice, you know, old people wear it. Like, I wear old spice. Uh, but Ovox is pretty good. I mean, I've tried this on many different, well, I haven't tried it. I've actually used this on many different projects and one of the things I like about it is just the simple fact that it's easy to use and there is a complex version, of course, and you can add automation and so forth. Hey, DJ Swivel, this is what a multi-band <laughs> pitch correction <laughs> plugin should be like. Now here's one for the books right here, Output Thermal. Is it one of the best or is it one of the worst VST plugins of 2020? Definitely one of the best. I know guys, I know. For people that know me and when it comes down to output, we don't have the best of relationships, but when it comes down to this plugin right here, thermal and output portal and everybody's favorite, which is output arcade made by the same developer, which left the company. Output, you better get this mofo back in the building because thermal is a very good plugin. I'm not gonna go into the spill, but it's a multi-band distortion plugin that brings a lot to the table. And yeah, to watch that video. Speaking of multi-band distortion plugins, we have Fab Filter Saturn too. Is it one of the best or one of the worst VST plugins of 2020? I'm gonna tell you right now, it's definitely one of the best. Now I'm not a huge fan of Fab Filter, or at least their price point of their plugins. Yeah. But when it comes down to their functionality and their ease of use and their depth, yeah, I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, I've talked about this, throw it on drums, throw it on anything if you really want that tape vibe. For some reason, this was the year of distortion, but holy crap, 2020 was distorted altogether. So match made in hell. This is Shaper Box 2, but we're talking about their new drive shaper. Is it one of the best or one of the worst VST plugins of 2020? Come on, man, I recently did this review. Definitely 
the best multi-band distortion on the market. And it's really hard to top something like output thermal or fat filter Saturn II, but this company right here, Cable Guys, they maximized it with just giving you different automation lanes, being able to split the bands, being able to apply modulation in each individual band, being able to change all these bands all together. As soon as you add a different band or you click on a different band, uh, all these different parameters reset and you could do different things all together and that is phenomenal. Here's something from Isotope. I know I haven't talked about them much in this video at all, but this is the Overb. Is it one of the best VST plugins or is it one of the worst VST plugins of 2020? I would say average to mediocre, to be honest. Well, wait a minute, guys. I know that might sound a little spicier than needed, but I think NeoVerb is very good. Obviously, they have their built-in AI that Isotope does better than every other company at this point, and that is really good for a reverb. But again, it's like, come on, man, it's a reverb. You know, it's like, what, what really can you do? But when you use this on vocals, given that you have the CPU power, because this is just like all isotope plugins, very CPU intensive and respectfully so since it's AI driven. Yeah, how are you, what's gonna make you choose this over something that is very quaint and gets the job done when it comes to a reverb? To finish off all the VST plugin effects that work on both Windows and Mac, we have UGEM Finisher Neo. What a way to finish. Is it one of the best or one of the worst VST plugin effects of 2020? Definitely below average. To be quite honest, and this is not being disrespectful to you, Jam, or it kind of is, but this is no different than Drip, in my opinion. Like, they give you a whole bunch of presets of stuff, and you get bare minimal control over what parameter does what and some things in the UI, even though it's a very simple UI, actually doesn't make any sense. And that's a lot coming from somebody like me that messes with a lot of sound design material. Yeah, it's just, uh... But if you bought it, 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 the only caveat would be that the price point is higher than Drip. And then in that case, I would probably recommend Drip at that point. I'm just saying. So. Tell me how you feel about this video. Well, I already know you guys enjoy this format because it's me being honest, obviously, and that's why most people check on my channel and, and like my reviews because I'm quite honest and brutally honest, and yeah, the truth comes out. And I, I like to say, you know, even if your plugin was the worst, doesn't mean it's the end of the world, and I'm not trying to just destroy your company. I'm just giving my offset opinions of why I don't feel that the plugin is good. I do over so many different reviews and stuff like that. And, and if your plugin was considered the best, well, congratulations. It was well-deserved and there were a lot of good ones this year and it deserves its proper recognition and not over-hyping it. 